I'm sure, like most of you, the start of our summer was pretty quiet. Apart from our escape from Egypt, uh, which I talked about before, things were pretty quiet around the house, but it wasn't long before we started getting pretty stir-crazy. But we didn't want to do something traditional. We wanted to dive deeper into our home province of Ontario. We wanted to reach into the soul of what makes this province such an incredible place to be. So we planned a road trip through Six Nations, Bradford, Toronto and Ottawa with the goal of discovering incredible Indigenous and Indigenous run tourism experiences throughout the province. Indigenous tourism isn't always what you expect it to be. There are loads of historical attractions where you can learn about traditional living, First Nations communities, and all the magical drumming and dance that accompanies events such as powwows. But for every traditional experience, there are countless other attractions such as art tours, hiking and canoe rides, and even stand-up paddleboard outfitters. So we gave ourselves three days to get a glimpse of what Indigenous tourism looks like in Ontario. And it blew our minds. When I thought of the oldest church in Ontario, I wouldn't have guessed that it would be in Brantford. This 235-year-old Protestant church is the last remaining building from the original Mohawk settlement that would one day become that city. And it has seen a tremendous amount of history. Much of that history is represented in the eight brilliant stained glass windows that line two of the walls. From the unification of the six Iroquois nations to the struggles and perseverance of the residential school system, the Mohawk Chapel offers a wonderful introduction to the rich history of First Nations people in Ontario. Our second stop was in the Six Nations community itself at the Agua Skills and Trades and Trading Centre. This sprawling property has a greenhouse dedicated to reintroducing Carolinian plants back into nature. A guided walk through the grounds and gardens showed us the indigenous plants such as sage, wild strawberries, and much more. But the main attraction of the OSTTC property is the recreation 17th century longhouse. On the tour of the longhouse, we were taught about traditional 17th century living and shown some of the beautiful traditional handicrafts. We are here in Six Nations, Ontario, uh, where we've been exploring the property here. They have a really cool tourism experience where you can visit a traditional longhouse, learn about uh, uh, crafts and tools and uh, all sorts of things that uh, First Nations and Indig uh, uh, Indigenous people in Canada have used uh, you know, for centuries and millennia. And, uh, get a taste of how things have progressed over the years uh, into modern times. I'm here with uh, Courtney Jonathan, who is the cultural coordinator here at OSTTC. She has been a wealth of knowledge as well as her, uh, her compatriot here as well. And uh, we've learned a lot. The kids had a blast walking through the gardens and learning about the traditional Carolinian plants and uh, the way that they're trying to build and regrow uh, traditional plant species that have grown here for centuries and now have been a little bit misplaced. So I just want to give Courtney uh, the chance to talk a little bit about OSTCC and what they do here and why you should come and make a visit to Six Nations Ontario. So we are here at the 17th century longhouse on Six Nations where we offer guided tours uh, about the history and knowledge of our people. We also offer ecotourism tours, so we talk about the traditional plants and how they were used. Uh, please come down to see our longhouse. Um, we are booking tours for groups, schools, um, anybody that's wanting to learn the actual, the actual history and factual history of our people. 
this is the place to come to do your tour. Just a short drive down the road from the OSTTC is Chiefswood Park National Historic Site. This beautiful park is an amazing vacation destination, and it's just an hour from Toronto. Chiefswood Park is magnificently situated on the shores of the Grand River. It's dotted with gorgeous wildflower gardens that make for the perfect photo background. And there are absolutely beautiful wooden glamping cabins that are perfect for groups of up to eight visitors. Chiefswood Park isn't without its own rich history either. In fact, this was the childhood home of one of Canada's most celebrated poets, Emily Pauline Johnson. This powerful artist of Mohawk and British descent shook the world with her work that embraced both sides of her heritage. So we're still hanging out here in Six Nations, Ontario, and now we're over at Chiefswood Park which is the child, where the childhood home is for famed uh, Mohawk English poetess E. Pauline Johnson is. We've been exploring her home and learning about some of the history of her and her family, uh, but that's not all this park has to offer. There's a lot going on here, including these absolutely beautiful glamping cabins that they have on offer uh, that are perfect for families or even kind of a multi-family getaway close to Toronto. They're really beautiful. There's a lot of other things that the park has, go has going on as well. There's a beautiful river that runs through it. There's a park. And I'm going to pass it on to Yvonne Styers, who's the Chiefswood Park attendant. <laughs> Thank you. I've been struggling over that. And uh, she's been a wealth of knowledge for us. And I'd like to give her the opportunity to tell us a little bit about uh, all the other features and why people would want to make Chiefswood Park a destination for their family vacation. Yeah, well, we also do canoeing and kayaking. Um, if you're a beginner, we do lessons on that as well. Um, the cabins that we have the larges, they hold up to eight people. The smalls, they hold up to six. Um, what else do we have? We have um, an on the water tour where we do our cultural teachings and we take people on a guided tour up the river and back. Um, it's a beautiful river. Yes, there's a boat launch down there. People want to bring their boats out, they're allowed to. Um, they can dock and they can move their boat down below where the river is. Um, we do, we're going to be putting together more programming for like kids too, like so they can find arrow hits. We're going to be doing digs. We do the movie in the park um, where we set up a great big projector screen and have popcorn and drinks and stuff like that. Um, we have all kinds of programming going on. You have everything so, you need for yes. a day of outdoor family fun. Yes. That's that fantastic. Kind of stuff. So. The next morning we woke early and made our way into the heart of Toronto. This was one of the last places we expected to find one of the coolest First Nations run experiences in Ontario. But man, was it incredible. My family had just taken up stand-up paddleboarding, and we were on our way to Budapest Park to meet with Jennifer Rudsky of Osha Ocean. Jennifer is one of a family of First Nations sisters who brought their love of surf and surf back from their winter home in Hawaii and chose to share it with those looking to explore another side of Toronto. Osha Osha offers a number of great sun tours along the Toronto shoreline, but we opted for the Humber River Tour, which took us to parts of Toronto that I can hardly believe even exists. Our time with Osha Osha was over way too soon. I can't wait to go back and explore some of the other Toronto sun tours. So here we are, and this is downtown Toronto. Can you believe it? Sure doesn't look like it to me. Uh, we are here with Jennifer from Osha Osha. They're a stand-up paddleboard operation that runs right out of uh, the beach area in downtown Toronto. And she's been showing us some sides of the city that we have never experienced before. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about how you got started? Yeah, I started paddleboarding in 2012. It was through my love of surfing. And 
and um, having grown up in Scarborough and in Toronto, we always had this lake at our doorstep and until I started paddle boarding, I really didn't go onto the lake. So um, yeah, somebody introduced me to this when I got back from a surf trip. I was, cur I was at the time studying yoga and I got onto a paddle board and all of a sudden it opened up this whole world to me. The lake and then the Humber River and this beautiful place that we're in here. This is really incredible. I mean, to think that, you know, 200 meters beside us is the Gardner Expressway. And, uh, you know, all the giant condos that have sprung up on the lakeshore and here it's something Sound like out of another another world. It is, but um, the Hover River is actually um, the original trade route of the indigenous people. So this is actually how Toronto became to exist. The Humber connects the upper Great Lakes to Lake Ontario, and this was the trading point. And so because of the Humber, um, we're yeah, able we're to, here today. Yeah, we're here today. Now you, uh, that trade route has a bit of a connection to yourself and your family, does it not? Yeah, so I'm native. I'm Tetlik Wichin and Mali Maliseet. Um, but I grew up here in Toronto. And so being able to share this and just sharing the history and um, a bit of the culture and like the, the native people of this territory. Awesome. Yeah. And you you run this operation with your sisters, is that correct? Yeah, I do. I have four sisters yeah. and we all have a role. Some are bigger than others. I spend a lot of time on the water and doing the back end stuff, but all of my sisters, um, yeah, have total, some involvement. Total family operation. I love that. Yeah. Well, I really appreciate the fact that you, you've shown us this area of Toronto that we never would have existed and we appreciate you know, the importance and, and the heritage of a route like this and, and how it connects to the history of Canada and the history of the First People. And uh, we're really looking forward to exploring some more with you. And I thank you so much. Thank you. But now it was time to make our way up to Ottawa for our final experiences on our Indigenous road trip through Ontario. Yes, I know there are loads more Indigenous experiences in Ontario between Toronto and Ottawa, but during COVID times, many of them weren't running in order to maintain safety in their communities. They'll open up again, and we look forward to visiting them once they do. Our first stop in Ottawa was with the absolutely lovely Jamie Morse, who runs a local Indigenous art tour through Ottawa called Indigenous Walks. Now I'll admit, when I thought about taking our kids on an indigenous themed walking tour of Ottawa, my hopes for their entertainment were not high. At best, I hoped that they wouldn't be too bored. But man, was I wrong. Jamie has a way of explaining the nuances of the art and monuments around Ottawa that had my kids eating out of her hand. We were all fascinated as she described the unintentional and sometimes intentional slights to First Nations people in the monuments found throughout Canada's capital. Honestly, if you're interested in art or First Nations history, join one of Jamie's Indigenous Walks tours. Your mind will be expanded. We're winding up our time in Ottawa here with a tour of indigenous and indigenous and indigenous featured uh, monuments and art installations around Ottawa. And the tour has been with Indigenous Walks, which is run by Jamie Morris, who's an absolute wealth of information. Uh, we've really had our eyes open about uh, the you know the political leanings and a lot of the the best word to say it, but omissions maybe of, of uh, you know, indigenous culture through some of the political artwork around the city. It's fascinating. You know, it's been that the last the country. And uh, so I just, love to, first of all, I want to say thank you for the incredible tour. And I just want to give you a chance to uh, talk about your tour and uh, some of the reasons why you started. 
Yeah, sure. Um, the one of the reasons I started the tours is because I have children, and I wanted to make sure that they saw themselves in the world around them. And even though they're indigenous, uh, there's not a lot, you know, to look around and uh, just sort of identify our, you know, who we are through monuments, artwork, um, and and just you know through the the day to day day to day things that we see. So I, I really wanted to. Uh, start that for my kids and now one of my children is a tour guide so that's really great uh, she takes uh, you know teachers on tours and stuff and and helps them with their knowledge on indigenous uh, social political cultural issues that we uh, address on the tour as well yeah fantastic and, and really enlightening I, I think everyone who comes here and is interested in uh, in Canadian indigenous history and indigenous mm -hmm. culture should, should join your tour because it it offers such a unique perspective on the artwork and the history of the city and the country and uh, it's something that's often overlooked in in uh, a lot of the tours that we Yeah, absolutely. And, and I know that you said you and your family have come to Ottawa several times and I'm sure like you probably learned a few new things and a new a few new like secret spots and stuff like that that you never knew before and I think anybody who's even from Ottawa would uh, you know, have a good surprise on the tour as well. Absolutely. Thank you again, Jamie. Yeah, you're welcome. welcome. I look forward to doing it again. Yeah, super. Thanks very much. I'm talking about the phenomenal Indigenous Experiences program that takes place on the shores of the Ottawa River. Mary, our Indigenous Experiences guide, toured us around the attraction, which is temporarily being run out of the Canadian Museum of History in Gatineau. is a perfect introduction to Indigenous history for those who haven't had a chance to explore First Nations culture firsthand. Our visit began with some mesmerizing dancing and drumming. If you've never been to a First Nations powwow before, you'll be googling the next one near you after watching the dancers in their spectacular regalia. From there, we were introduced to the First Nations role in the fur trade and shown traditional First Nations tools in village life. Our Indigenous Experiences visit was capped off with a Voyager canoe ride on the Ottawa River, where we learned all about Voyager life and the reliance on the First Nations people. Paddling this monstrous canoe beneath the Parliament building and along such historic shores made for the perfect ending to our Indigenous road trip through Ontario. On this trip, we were blessed to see the tremendous breadth of Indigenous tourism experiences on offer here in Ontario. I want to give a big thank you to Destination Indigenous for allowing us to take part in this incredible time uh, and for allowing me to share some of the experiences that I had uh, with them on their website. If you've ever wanted to experience First Nations culture or First Nations tourism yourself, head on over to the Destination Indigenous website. There you can get a list of some of the incredible uh, experiences that are on offer from small and large operators across the country. Thank you all for tuning in. Make sure you hit those like and subscribe buttons if you wanna see more amazing family travel content. And we'll see you next time on Wandering Waggers.